Hello, um, welcome to my uh, talk about how to fly helicopters. Um, yeah, so I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is uh, Zishan Ali and I recently joined Collabra, actually this week, uh, it's my first week. And um, I thought that this would be a very good way for me to get introduced to a lot of people <laughs> by doing this tea time presentation. Um, and um, uh, you can read about me in the in the company newsletter and stuff. So I won't get too into too much details about myself. Um, anyway, uh, one of the things uh, I'm into is uh, flying helicopters. And uh, the one of the, the first things people ask about uh, this subject is why I'm into helicopters. Um, firstly, uh, because it's the most awesome thing you can possibly do, uh, flying helicopters. So that's there, um, but it's also because when I was growing up, I watched a lot of Airwolf and I even have a mark here because of that show. Uh, so I was so into it. And um, uh, so I, I really wanted to become a helicopter pilot for, for a long time when I was little. Um, but um, I was growing up in Pakistan and there was there's no way you can become a helicopter pilot unless you go into military. And I did not want to go to military. So um, I uh, forgot about it and uh, never thought about becoming a helicopter pilot. But some years ago, I had a pretty bad breakup and I wanted to do something really cool with my life. So I thought of uh, flying helicopters and then I did. Um, you might also hear my cat or see him, so don't mind him. Um, and um, uh, so um, back to helicopters, yeah. Um, and also, don't put cat on a helicopter. Do not put a cat on a helicopter. And I don't mean the cat or our cat, the Ekaterina. I mean cats. <laughs> um, anyway, it's a, it's a really terrible idea. Um, so um, that's why I was into helicopters. And I was in, in England, actually, in London, where I uh, uh, learned to fly in a place not so far from Cambridge uh, called Elstree, uh, and it's in Borehamwood. It's like the northmost part of London. Um, and I did uh, learn for two years in there, and then I finally got my license. It's a private license, so I can uh, fly with passengers. I can uh, self fly hire helicopters, uh, but I can't make money out of it. Um, so, um, yeah, it, um, and so as I said, it took two years, and so it's a lot of hard work. And um, I have to be honest, it's also spending a lot of your money on, uh, on it. Um, I had to take bank loans because it's um, it got too too silly at some point. It's uh, um, you in the beginning, some might tell you that it will only take 25 hours or so of training, and then you can you're kind of already a private pilot, but that's not true at all. Um, most people need at least, uh, at the very least, uh, 70 hours of training. Um, if you are extremely good, you can get into 65 hours in total of training, but that's if you are extremely good somehow or something, but usually people don't. Um, so if you want to do this, I would um, suggest that you be prepared to uh, to uh, to train for at least um, 80 hours and of course the per hour cost depends on the country and the school this is my cat <laughs> Pentu um, and um, uh, yeah um, so that's uh, how to get the, there financially and uh, logistically um, and, and if you're in England uh, there's a lot of schools and I I, when I was in Canada, I saw a lot of schools, at least in Toronto area, so I'm hoping also in uh, Montreal there's a lot of schools, um, at least some. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, and um, the, uh, one of the things that people ask me, second thing, or maybe sometimes first thing about helicopters, that isn't it very dangerous? Um, in some way, yeah, um, but... Um, uh, not in the way that you would um, think. Uh, people usually think that if an engine fails in a helicopter, it just falls down like a rock. That's not true at all. It just glides, uh, it is capable of gliding uh, just like a plane. Um, and actually the good part is that uh, unlike a plane, you don't need a lot of land, uh, clear land to, to be able to land it. You do need some clear land, It's it, it won't be flying down like people would think that it will just slowly come down in a 
in a straight line vertically. I know that's not how it works. Um, it needs some uh, space, uh, empty space, but still it's not as much as a, as a plane would need for a safe landing. Um, it's not even comparable. So in, in that regard, it's actually much safer. Um, you have to do one thing um, uh, uh, and then uh, and you, you get regular, rigorously trained for that during the training. Um, actually, that was uh, engine failures is one thing that um, we did like for hours before they, they let me take the test uh, for the private license. Um, and um, uh, my examiner was saying, oh, that's the best thing you did uh, in the, during the test. Um, I didn't do very well during the test otherwise because I was extremely nervous. But that, that was one thing he said that I did pretty well, uh, handling engine off landing and stuff. Um, one thing that is true about uh, planes um, is that it's, uh, sorry about helicopters, is that um, it is dynamically unstable. I don't know if that means anything to you. Um, uh, whereas a plane is, uh, as far as I know, very stable. So, if, for example, if you leave controls in any plane, um, nothing big will happen. You, the, the plane keeps its mo movement, uh, its um, momentum, and it keeps going in the same um, direction, and it keeps its height almost. Um, but um, in a helicopter, at least in the small ones that are not, not very um, uh, stable, uh, you, you have to keep your hand on the control at all times. Um, if you even leave it for a few seconds, yeah, you, you don't want to do that. So in that way, yeah, it's dangerous, but you just don't leave the controls then, and that's all fine. Um, and um, the second thing um, I would get into is uh, how it works. That was the main topic. Um, so um, the way it works is pretty simple in the hover. Um, so if you want to just take it up or down, that's that's extremely simple. Um, uh, what it, what happens is that the you you turn the um, um, rotors um, by um, uh, powering them from the from the piston engine. On small helicopters, it's piston engine. On big ones, there's turbine engines. But um, at least the ones I found uh, flew were all uh, piston. Um, and um, um, yeah, when it starts rotating, there's um, um, uh, something called angle of attack, so it um, it um, strikes the air and it pulls it down, and um, a, um, and when the air gets pulled down, so you create a, a different uh, uh, pressure differential, I think it's called, um, and that um, uh, pushes the helicopter up, and then you you go up. Um, he put the caps lock on for some reason. Um, yeah, and um, uh, but it requires a lot of power in hovering. So, um, and it's not a lot of fun either. Like it's cool at first, like you you are in air and you are very near to the ground, but it's uh, it's um, not enjoyable for a long time. So you want to usually go somewhere with the helicopter, and um, that's when you want to do a forward flight. And the forward flight is actually consumes a lot less um, uh, power and. Um, um, engine, uh, the, the helicopter becomes a lot more very efficient at a speed of about 40 knots, which is in kilometers about, uh, I don't know, 80, uh, I think something like that. Um, anyway, um, and, um, and the reason is that it, um, so it's all about the angle of attack. So a helicopter kind of becomes a plane when it goes forward in a high enough speed. Um, and um, just like a plane, when you when you move it forward, it strikes the the wind at a particular angle. And some some of this there's uh, of course an action and reaction. So it uh, applies a force, and it, this applies force back. And there is a component of um, um, forces that go that is upwards. So it pushes it upwards. And um, uh, that that the same thing happens in in a plane. But in a plane, the the it's like fixed the aerofoil. Um, but in, um, in helicopter, that's not true. But the, essentially, the, uh, the uh, rotor, uh, the blade of the rotor, it strikes in the same way. And it also has an angle of attack. And the more speed you're going with uh, forward speed, the um, higher velocity uh, is of the wind uh, that is, uh, or the air that is um, striking the blades. And of course, 
the the um, the bigger the vertical component that is going upwards so the um, you have more force going upwards and you have a lot more power available um, in forward flight uh, of course there is a limit to it um, how for how uh, how much um, um, high speed um, reduces the amount of power you need um, but um, in general the higher the speed the more power you have um, kind of but also the sum of the power is being consumed by your forward motion as well to keep the rotors turning um, so as, as I said there's a limit um, anyway that's the basic of how it works um, as I said it's all about angle of attack so the controls work uh, in a similar way um, you um, you have th three controls um, one is on your left hand a helicopter pilot typically sits on the right hand side um, just like drivers in the UK um, uh, so <coughs> um, the stick you have usually between your, your feet or a bit coming from up um, which is called um, a cyclic and uh, that is on your, on your right hand and on your left hand you, 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 um, you have a lever called collective and then you on your feet you have uh, pedals um, the cyclic is the most important one I think um, well all of them are important um, but that's important in the sense that you cannot ever let it go that's the only control all the other controls you can let go but not that one um, so um, in the, uh, the what cyclic does is that the, the, na uh, the name uh, the reason for the name is that is because um, it changes <coughs> excuse me and the angle of attack on a particular point in the in the during the rotation, um, and um, because of that, the um, the blades, the forward moving blade, uh, either rises or goes down. <coughs> I won't into go into the details of um, why and how because that's a lot of um, physics involved there. Um, but um, it's just that um, it goes up and down based on that on the angle of attack and. Um, um, and since it uh, goes up and down and it's different on different uh, sides of the rotation um, <coughs> it can go up forward or backwards uh, sideways uh, in all directions <coughs> and that controls the motion um, uh, during hover also in power flight um, which where you want to go and um, yeah so cyclic is used for controlling um, uh, the roll and the forward and backward motion um, then you have the uh, collective and that's called collective because it changes the angle of attack on in all um, points of rotation so it's uh, that's why it's called collective because it collectively changes the angle of attack um, and uh, that means that uh, you have uh, more or less angle of attack overall and if you have more angle of attack then you um, go up and if you have less then you go down um, and that's one of the things you need to do if, uh, in case of um, unlikely event of engine failure, you need to quickly put it uh, down. Uh, the angle of attack should be zero so that the air coming from the down um, can strike the whole blade and create a kind of a resistance so it, the helicopter can become a glider. Um, and uh, then the pedals. So um, uh, you, they control the angle of attack on the tail rotor um, typically. And that in turn um, means like uh, how much uh, the yaw um, is like if you, um, because it's um, the tail rotor is there for canceling the torque uh, from the main rotor. Um, uh, so um, uh, um, yeah, if you have more uh, um, torque uh, or um, more counter uh, force, I mean, uh, for the torque, uh, then you go in one direction. And if you uh, have less, then you go in the other direction. and by one or the other direction, I mean left and right uh, turning. Um, so um, that's what the controls do. Um, I, I, I know I'm going really fast, and um, if you don't understand any of this, uh, just let me know and I can explain uh, or point you to some resources that uh, you would find useful. Um, the last thing I would mention is that um, um, I um, uh, bumped into a bit of a problem because now I'm in Germany and in Germany helicopters are even more expensive um, so I would not be flying helicopters in, in Germany I'm hoping to actually learn to fly planes now so that I can keep kind of flying in here as well um, but um, I will be coming back to um, to London to, to fly uh, every now and then uh, and um, uh, there is a very awesome 
trip that you can take to, to fly above uh, central London on the Thames River. Um, you go next to the Shard and all the big buildings in the center, um, and uh, you go from east to west end. Um, it's one of the most awesome uh, helicopter trips you can ever have. And, um, and uh, yeah, I would be looking for volunteers. Uh, I can take at, at least two people with me. Um, and um, you don't have to be worried at all. It's, um, it's perfectly safe. I, I'm well qualified. Also, if you are not um, assured by that, then uh, there will be also um, a very highly trained instructor with me with controls as well and um, with thousands and thousands of hours um, on, on his belt. So um, you have absolutely nothing to, to worry. Um, and uh, some people think that they are afraid of heights, so it will um, be a problem. But I myself was afraid of heights, but it, didn't, it doesn't kick in in, in a helicopter. Um, I have never seen anyone being, a, I, one person, but um, he was really special. Um, so um, yeah. Um, um, yeah, uh, let me know if you are interested and we can we can talk about flying together or I can give you pointers on if you want to learn to fly, let me know. Okay, um, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and I'll be logging off now. See you around. Ciao.